Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. And let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, taste that sea that the Lord is good. Oh, taste that sea that the Lord is good. Oh, taste that sea that the Lord is good. Good morning, greater love back to church where we raise the roof over here at 6601 Main Road where our proud pastor is the Pastor Isaac Grant Jr. We welcome you to our live Sunday morning service. Our scripture will be coming from Psalms 150, 1 through 6. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excess and greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbre and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud sounding cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. And this is the shouting part right here. This is an invitation. Let every
Father, that you can do everything but fail. Lord, don't let us worry about anything, but let us pray about everything. Lord, Lord, we need to put it in your hands, Lord. Lord, we just pray all, all over this world for all the brothers and sisters who are suffering, Lord. Them who are your children, Lord. Lord, we know you say you never leave us nor forsake us. And we need you to touch somebody this morning. Convict somebody to give their life to you today, Lord. Convict somebody, Lord. Convict somebody, Lord. I can't do it no more by myself. But I need Jesus. Somebody needs you this morning, Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus that they will invite Jesus to come live in their heart. To be their person, Lord, and say, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord. We just want to say thank you for being so good to us, Lord. Because we look back on our lives, Lord. When we look back, really look back, we know it's you that brought us this far. And you promise in your word, Lord, that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
be here today. Amen. How many of y'all grateful to be in the house? Amen. Amen. You gotta be grateful Amen. to be here. Yes, Lord. And, uh, yes, Lord. Yes. The Lord kept COVID away from us. Yes, yes, yes. Lord. And we want to thank God for that. Yes, Lord. Somebody. Thank you. I, I, want, I want to announce this even in the beginning that uh, well, let's say amen for Brother Harold Williams. Uh, he had a big right up in the paper. Brother might be going to Hollywood now. Uh, well, let's, let's speak that in his life. He might be going to Hollywood. Come on, y'all. Let somebody write it out. That's been doing it for a long time, and uh, yeah, yeah. I thank the Lord for him. I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord for it. When I uh, when I got the text, I, I was in my bedroom. I said, "Wow, Jesus, I'm going somewhere." Yeah. Took some time, took some perfection, and took some working. Took some sticking to it. Amen. Yeah, yeah, stick to it. You know. <laughs> He didn't give up. He kept going. And now the Lord has blessed him. I am so grateful to God to be in the midst of that brother. How many of y'all know that the Lord is good? I got a few minutes. I just feel like giving my three-minute testimony. I thank all of you all for praying for my sister. Uh, she went into surgery on Tuesday. And uh, once they opened her up, yeah. a few minutes later, they had to close up. Amen. Because uh -huh. they called the thing cold red. Oh. And she thought she had left it. Uh -huh. But she got a saved doctor who yeah. anointed her at all before they went in. Amen. Lord have mercy. He covered her up. Blood pressure went back the way it's supposed to be. Did the surgery and she is well. So I am so grateful to God. I really am. I'm thankful to God because uh, not only did did that do something with her, that did something to my whole family. Amen. And it was a coming together because we thought. <laughs> but God knows best, and I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord for my oldest. She's my oldest sister. Yeah. It's been prophesied to her that uh, she got something to tell young ladies. Amen. But she lost her husband last year. And uh, I told her to write a book. God, God got you. God, God. How many of y'all know that God got us? Come on, I, I'm not talking. I'm not playing with this. I mean, how many know that God really? God really do have us. When you, when you can get that in your spirit, when you can get that deep down on the inside of you to know that God got you. And, oh, God, I feel Jesus right there. He got us, y'all. Come on, man. We been in there every Sunday. God, but really taking care. Even in the midst of everything that's going on, you're still taking care of us. And we, we just thank you. Father, we come now and we come in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for all that you have done for us. Even in the midst of storm, God, you brought us to the other side. Thank you, Lord. And God, we want to say thank you. Could have been dead and sleeping in our grave if you allow us to be here. And since you allow us to be here, we're not going to be defeated by the enemy. We'll lift up holy hands, we'll clap hands, we'll stomp feet, and we'll give your name the glory because we realize that you are the one that's worthy to be praised. Thank you for saving my sister's life, God. Thank you for the doctors that went in. Thank you for the surgeons, God. Thank you for you, God, because you went in with them, and I give you glory for that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you have your Bible, I, I want to do something here this morning. Because we're living in a day and time where 
Congratulations. Depression, suicide, yeah. all of that's going up. Yes, and don't fool yourself, it's not just worldly people that's doing that. Right. Amen. Church folks are hmm. giving up yes. in the fight. Yes, they are. <laughs> that can happen. You're taking your life when you you supposed to know who he is. That's right. But it's a lesson to be learned because you can be in church, yes. but the church not be in you. Yes. That's right. Come on. Come on, you in the building, you in the building and you performing, but he's not in you. Right. Come back to me if you can. Because, because when trouble comes, you can't afford to throw in the towel and fold up your hand. Somebody needs you. Ain't nobody talking back to me. Somebody needs you. Somebody's on the outside. They need an encouraging word from you. Because you say you sing and you in the Lord's hand. You got to stay there, baby. You got to mean what you say. You can't give up. You cannot give up. Don't give up in the fight. Because it's a battle going on, but it's a spiritual battle going on. And you can't afford to give up in the fight. Listen, turn your Bibles to the book of Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. I just want to read two verses out of out of this chapter. I just want to read verse 5 and 6. Verse 5 and verse 6 in Hebrews chapter 13. The Bible says, let your conversation be without covetousness. Oh, Meaning you ought to be free from the love of money. Yeah. Yeah. And be content. Watch what he says. And be content with such things as ye have for he has said, watch what he said, for he has said, come on, look at your neighbor and say, Jesus said this, he, he said, he said, I'll never leave thee, nor forsake thee, anybody believe that, I'm talking the Bible now, he, he says, I'll never believe, I'll never leave thee, nor forsake thee, and verse 6 says, so that we may boldly mm -hmm, say, the Lord is my help. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Come on, come on, come on. I ain't going to fear what man can do unto me. I, I want to talk about, I want to talk about, in spite of the circumstance, God is with you. That's what I want to talk about. In spite of the circumstance, you, you, you got to know that God is with you. Can, can I get a witness here? Anybody in here ever been through some stuff? Yes, Lord. And, and you, you, you really thought you was not going to make it, but the God that you serve, he was with you. So in spite of the circumstances, you got to know that God is with you. Yes, he is. I, I, I don't care what they say, how they say it. God is with you. I, I, can, I, can, I can look back at my life and, and see some stuff that I went through and I didn't understand back then, but I understand now that the God that I serve, he was right there with me. Can, can I get a witness here? When, when, when my little child went to prison, I was upset, mad, and crazy, but I didn't understand that God was right there with me. I can't get no help here because God said, she got to go through her stuff so she can make it to the other side. And I thank God that she went through and God was with her and he's with her right now. You got to know that, listen, listen, no matter what you're going through today, no matter what your circumstances is, understand me this morning that God is with you. In this 13th chapter, he first starts out to talk about brotherly love. How we ought to, how we ought to be loving to one another. How many of you know we got to be loving in this day and time? We should have been loving one to one to another, but right now we got to be loving to one another. This ain't no time for hatred. It ain't no time for bitterness, cause you don't know when it's going.
going to hit your family. Y'all ain't saying nothing back to me. And so, so, so he starts this off by saying that we ought to, we ought to be loving toward them. Then he says, do be not forgetful to entertain stuff. Because you, you can be entertaining a, a, a stranger, but you can be entertaining an angel. Yes. How many of you know sometimes you think somebody ain't no good, ain't this and that, you talking about them, but you don't know you can be entertaining an angel. Right. Somebody right there on the street corner, you you talking about them when they asking you for a little change and you know you got something in your overflow and then you go to talking crazy, but you don't know you can be entertaining an angel. Then he says, remember them that are in bonds and bonds with them. And he's talking about it change the adversary as being yourself also in the body. Then he talks about marriage, y'all. Yeah. He says, marriage is on. Yeah. Let your marriage be had an honor. My, what's this? All, my bad. All the bed. It didn't be under five. Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. Yeah, he said, let it be undefiled. Then he talks about whoremongers. Yeah. Then he talks about adulterers. And, and then he talks about how God will judge that. Yeah. And you, you got to understand that God will judge that. Then this would have. He talks about how God will judge that. How God will judge that, that stuff. Because when he says love, that's what he started off in this particular chapter with. He started off with love. So I believe in this particular chapter, he's saying, you know, even when you get married, you got to love your wife like Christ loved the church. Right. But there, there are times that you can't be running around and doing a whole bunch of other stuff. But watch this. Let's get into the text. Now he says, let your conversation be without covetousness. Yes, yes. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as ye have. Watch this in the text. The word translated, uh, let, now, now you say let your conversation, let me back up, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as he had. This word translated conversation does not refer to the speech, but to the general manner of living. It refers to one overall conduct. Stay with me. The key to killing covetousness is to be content with what you have. Because adversaries, however, appeal to covetousness. I got a witness right there because it's by advertising their product as something you just have to have. And so when you when you look at the TV and the television, watch this, they advertise stuff to you and it makes you feel that you just got to have that, but you really don't have to have that. Stay with me because I'm going somewhere. He said, he said, he said, he said, it, it'll make you, it, it'll come on, all right, watch me here. I know I got 99 suits. I don't need no more. I don't need no more. But one comes on and it looks good, Brother Nathan, and I say, I just got to have that. Say it with me, I'm going somewhere. Because in the Bible, listen, the Bible speaks about it. Listen, listen, I got to have that. And this covetous thing, this thing is real serious. Don't you know that in the body of Christ, some people are speaking time to try to covet your husband or your wife? I can't get no help. I'm just doing it. I don't you, it's in the body of Christ. You, you speak in tongue, and then you go, he love all Sunday, and you talk about you going to covet somebody else's husband and somebody else's wife. That ain't your wife and that ain't your husband. You can't covet what somebody else. I can't get no help, but I'll tell the truth. You can't covet that. It don't belong to you. Yes, yeah, stay with me. I'm going somewhere. Watch this now. Five times when I read the Bible. In the book of Genesis chapter 39. All right. I want to show you something. That even though God says he'll never leave you for forsake you. I want to prove it to you. That God meant what he said. In Genesis chapter 39. Yeah, go there with me. Genesis chapter 39. Look, look what God says. The Lord told Joseph, I'm with you. Five times 
in the chapter, he says, I'm with you. In Genesis chapter 39, verse 2, and the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Verse 3, and his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Listen in verse 8. But he, he re refused and, and said unto his master's wife. Watch this. He refused. Uh, he says unto his master's wife. Behold, my master water not is with me in the house. Watch this now. Verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Verse 23, the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him. That which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. And so in this particular chapter, God tells Joseph, I'm with you. But that didn't exempt him from jealousy and betrayal. Right. So come back to me if you can. I, I, I mean, God says, I'm with you. you. I'm with you. But it didn't exempt him from jealousy and betrayal or the advancement of the part of his wife. Yeah. Uh, here we get something. Yeah. That, that didn't exempt him. You know, the part of his wife came on to Joseph, but Joseph didn't go for the bait. Yeah. That's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> Joseph didn't go for the bait. Right. Joseph did not go for the bait. Right. So, so somebody ain't hearing me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you went for the bait, you ain't saying nothing. Right. <laughs> she, she, she comes out and she, she looks fine, she looks real good, but Joseph says, I, 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 I'm not going to do this because if I do this, I'm going to sin against God. But five times in the text, Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this now. And then he heard lies that sent him to prison. Stay with me. Because he lied on them and he got sent to prison. Uh -huh. I, I mean, lie five times. God says, I'm with you. Yes, he is. I'm, I'm, I'm right here with you. Yes, Lord. See, in spite of that circumstances that Joseph was in. God was with him. And I'm come by to tell you, if you do what's right, if you get in the circumstances, you got to realize that God will be right there with you. Come on, talk back to me. I said, if you get in the circumstances, if you, if you do it right, you got to understand that you got to do it right. And you know, God will be right there with you. I ought to get some witnesses right there to know that God will be right there with you. I mean, five times he told Joseph, I'm with you, I'm with you. But it did not prevent him from going through. And what I'm trying to tell you, even though God is with us, you want to go through some stuff, but you ought to come through it with joy. Because the Bible says that you ought to come through them things with joy because you know that God is with you. If you know that God is with you and you're doing it right, you don't need to put your hand down, put your hand You need to get up out of that bed and put your head up because God is with you. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Psalms 105, verse 18 and 19, watch what the Bible says. They bruise his feet with feathers and placed his neck in an iron car mm -hmm. until the time came to fulfill his dream. You know what the Lord did? He tested Joseph character. That's it. All right. I'm to Come on, man. He tested Joseph character. Yeah, <laughs> Help me somebody. Joseph didn't know it. Yeah. But 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 he was in training 
for reigning. I said he was in training for reigning. Come on, come on. They, 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 they ain't talking about Joseph in Long Fire. He's talking about Joseph. And because Joseph went to prison and got his feet all locked up. But Joseph didn't understand. He was in training for reigning. Because if you read the end of the book, he had to cover all of his brothers. Yeah, yeah. Talk back to me if you can. Yeah. See, you, you don't know I'm talking to somebody right now. You in training because God is getting ready to bless you to reign. Can I get a witness yeah, here? No. So don't give up on God. In spite of the circumstances, God is with you. And so you go through your trial. You go through your tribulation because you know that the Lord is with you. Yes, he is. Some of you had got locked up in prison, you would have gave up. Yeah, all right. But Joseph was in training yes. because God was getting ready for him to reign. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ooh, when I studied this, when I looked in the text, I, I saw myself in there. You ain't saying that. All of what I went through, yes, me, Lord Jesus. Right. and all that what you went through, yeah, yeah. God had you set up. Because God was getting ready for you to reign. He not can't get no help right there. He was getting ready for you to reign when you made up your mind, when you came out of your stuff and you made up your mind that I'm going to do it right, God. God is getting ready for you to reign, but don't give up. Don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Look at your David and say, don't give up. Look at what God wanted to do. God wanted to see if Joseph would true choose trust over lust. Mm. Ooh, God help me. That's good. He says, I want to see something, Joseph. Yeah. If you will trust me over this lust. Yes, come on. Because she do look good. Yeah. But but I want to see if you're gonna be obedient. Yes, Lord. And, and, and you was. Yes, What's the sound? Come on, talk back to me, y'all. He, he, he was going through his test. Yes. And what's this? Yes. Joseph passed the test. Yes. Thank you. He wanted to see whether he was going to be obedient over experience. Yes. Come on. Yes. Obedience is in the test. Yes, yes, you got to be obedient to yes. the word of God. Yes. You can't shine away from the word. You got to be obedient to every facet of the word. And the So, watch this now. Joseph was in prison after a noble purity regarding the part of his wife. God often allows his choice servants to suffer before they are promoted. I hear you, Father. I hear you. Come on with it. Yes, Lord. Right, you got to go through something before you can get promoted. And the problem we have is you you don't want to go through nothing but you want promotion. Ain't nobody talking. You I can't get no help right there. You don't want to go through nothing but you want promotion. But maybe in order to get promoted, you got to go through something. I can't get no help in here. It'll be some days when you fall down, but you got to get back up because you know that the God that you serve, He got to you get promoted. Right. Some of you want to like, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You want to you wanna come right in? Yeah. He will promote you. Thank because you. you feel that you, you got something that ain't nobody else got. You want to come in and get right on up and do what you want to do. But baby, let me tell you something. Before you get promoted, you're going to go through something. Talk back to me if you can. He has to go through something. But all that he went through, he was in training because God was getting for him to reign, but he just didn't reign. He had to go through something. Yes. And I'm preaching to somebody right now yes. that you're going through. Yes, Lord. But God sent me here today to tell you yes. don't give up. Yes, Lord. Because God is with you. Yes, don't go throw in the towel now. Uh -uh. Because God is with you. Watch
Watch this now. Watch it. It's in looking back that you realize what one of God's name is. You want to know what one of God's name is? Redeemer. Okay. Come on, come on out of here. Because he can redeem everything you've been through. Can I get a witness in? I said he can redeem everything you've been through. The good, the bad, the ugly, it's all a lesson. I said something right there. The good, the bad, the ugly, it's all a lesson. He can redeem that. But what the problem in the body is, you let people talk about you, and then people trip you up, and you begin to quit in the fight. Can I get a witness here? I, oh, Lord, have mercy. It's like nobody can fall. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Come on, somebody in the body fall. This is what we do. Nah. Yeah. We put our mouth straight on them. Right. 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 Yeah. We forget. We forget. You get to talking. Yes, Lord. I don't hear nobody. Yeah. You get to talking, and I say it now. And, 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 and as I study this Bible, I say now you done lost your mind because you ain't in the Word of God. <laughs> That ain't what you're supposed to be doing. Right. But if you ain't spiritual enough to do that, and some of you got the tag along. Yeah. All right. I feel like preaching. Yeah. Yeah. You got the tag along. Here they are. You know without a shadow of a doubt yeah. you know. that God has brought you out. Yeah. And you know you have made some errors. Come on, God. But God brought you out. Yeah. And here's the tag along. Yeah. And then you got some friends God, Lord, have mercy. That will sit around and talk about everybody else. But if you go to their house, their house is just the same as yours. Yeah. God ain't saying nothing back to me. Yeah. You, you, you know, and then you got to tag along. You will tag along right along with them because what that spirit has done, that spirit has transferred to you. And before you know it, you're right there with them. But why don't you be strong enough and powerful enough in God to say, I'm not going to sit around here and listen to you talk about nobody else because everybody is foul but the problem is if you stay down there even if you foul you got to get back up you can't stay down there and don't let nobody stay you stay down there how yeah, much you talk about me I'm going to help somebody here. Yep, you helping me? Thank in the last six months, this is what I learned. Come on now. When I knew that hmm. when what this pandemic, know? when this thing hit, yeah. nobody had a monopoly on it. Yeah. Right. No pastor had it. Because right. nobody ever went through this. Right. Yeah. And so I, I decided to do something. Mm -hmm. I walk every morning. So what the Lord directed me to do is just pray. Pray, son. Pray, and not only for this, but pray for the folks in your congregation. We ain't saying that. And if I'm speaking in tongues as I'm walking, and the Holy Ghost give me your name, I call it out in the air, and I pray that God would move in your situation, because that's the time when God was talking to me about somebody that was in trouble, and I prayed, y'all ain't saying nothing, and glory go to God, because when I see you, and you come tell me that you came out, that's when joy bell rings in my heart, because God moved, he said, I had a prayer because of the bell as much. But in your prayer time, you can't be running your mouth. The problem with us, you get on Facebook too much. You're on Facebook telling all your trouble and your problem. Facebook can't fix nothing for you. Facebook can't do nothing to get somebody else to gossip about your stuff. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. But if you learn to tell your stuff to the Lord and just leave it there, God will answer your prayer, baby. I'm telling you, God is a prayer answering God. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Watch this. Watch what happened. Come on. Watch what happened. 
the job, the lesson Joseph learned is this. God is with you even when there's no evidence that he is. Right. Can I get a witness here? Come on. I said God is with you even when there's no evidence that he's there. I can't get no help here. You, did you hear what I said? Even if there's no evidence that he's there, he's already there with you. I ought to get some help right there. You done been in trouble and you didn't know that the Lord was with you, but God was right there by your side all the time. He never left you because he said, I never leave you, no, will I forsake you. I believe that's good news for somebody. That's the word, man. That's the word. I believe that. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. And you got to understand that God is walking yes. alongside of you. Help us, Pastor. He's yes, he working is. with you. Yes, he is. He's going, he's, 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 he's right there with you he's in right your there. circumstance. Yes, yes. When, you, when you call yourself going through these little small, yes, yes. minute trials and yes. tribulations, it's not time to throw in the towel. Right. It's time yes. to get up and keep going. Watch me, watch me. Now, I'm going to pick on my boy this morning. And when I, when I say pick on him, watch this. His life is a testimony. Hallelujah. Yeah. Just like I was on crack cocaine uh -huh. and God bought me out. Yes, Lord. When God bought me out, God didn't bring me out to dog somebody else. Out. God bought me out to help somebody else. Come on, talk back to me. God, God bought me out so I could help somebody else. And boy, don't give up in the fight because God will bring you through. Watch this in. Watch this in. Now, y'all know my story. I done told it a hundred times and I'm going to tell it again. That's right. Y'all know I was crack addict, Rex. Yeah. But God saved me. Come on, Pastor. God saved me. And then God gave me a big responsibility. I came from crack. And then God gave me a responsibility to pastor and people. Yes, sir. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Yes. And I didn't know God said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. Yes. And then when God, when God brought me here, God knew that he was going to send some people here that was going to need my help. Y'all yes. ain't saying that. God knew that, 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 that some people was going to come here that I wouldn't have to wake on. I was not going to give up on them because God never gave up on me. I can't get no help up in here. And if you learn, come on, talk back to me. If you learn to lean with people and just depend on God to deliver them instead of, instead of you getting the glory for it, let God get the glory because God ain't going to see his glory with nobody else. But in the body of Christ, we want the glory. Y'all ain't saying nothing back to me. But God brought me here. And when God brought me here, I feel like preaching a little bit right here, Joseph. And, and, and I'm in the text and it's talking about Joseph. Mm, glory to God. So I said, this is the day for Joseph. And I ain't talking about Joseph in the Bible right now. I'm talking about Joseph Brown. I want somebody to hear me. I want somebody to hear me. I know y'all thought, look at me, TV world. Some of you musicians, y'all talked about him. And y'all thought he was going to the woods. But look at him now. Y'all ain't saying that. Because God said, because God said, Joseph, I'll never leave you. And I'll never forsake you. Now look at you now, Joseph. You in church clapping your hands. You in church giving God the glory. y'all got mad. Yes, what are you going to do, Pastor? How many times you going to let them get away? The Bible says 70 times 7, but that's just a number in there. Ain't nobody talking. Uh -huh. How you going to let him? He ain't no good. But we need somebody to shut your mouth. You don't know what we need because he didn't call you here to leave nobody. Ain't nobody talking. He called me to leave the congregation. Can I get a witness here? And when I hear from God, I'll always do what 
God told me to do because God never left me and he never forsake me in the work that I'm doing here at this time. Some of y'all did it. Some of y'all still do it. But you better be careful with your mouth. Better take your mouth and put it somewhere else. God. Because you can't curse what God has blessed. Don't they say that back to me. So he says, God have mercy. Watch this now. He is going ahead of you. Watch this. He's rearranging your circumstances on, in your favor. Come on, thank you, God. Who go help me? Uh, oh, he God is, is going ahead of you. He doing. You can't see him. Uh -huh, thank you. Oh God, you've been struggling for years, but you oh, can't see you. what God is doing. Help me, Lord thank Jesus. You. He's going ahead of you, and He's rearranging your yeah. stuff. Watch it. He's rearranging it for your yeah. favor. Anybody know that favor ain't fair? Yeah. Come on, somebody. Favor ain't fair. Ahead of you, and he's rearranging your stuff. But what God is saying this morning to somebody, in spite of your circumstances, in spite of you going through, God is saying to you, don't give up in the fight. Yes, yes. Watch this. Thank you. Watch Jesus, this. Thank you. The Bible says in verse 6, he says, You got to realize this. Watch this in verse 6. He said, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear. Because God didn't give us the spirit of fear. Right. Come on out of here. What can man do to me? But sometimes in the plan of God, things get worse before they get better. I just said something like that. <laughs> Y'all missed that right there. Sometimes in the plan of God, things get worse before they get better. But in the worst, can you hang in there? Come on, talk back to me. When it gets bad, can you hang in there? Because you know that he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. When it gets bad, you got to hang in there because the word of God said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Yes. Oh, you are Sometimes it gets worse. Before it gets better. And, and, and then you know when it gets to the worst? <sighs> That's when you must tighten your grip and lean harder on God. When it gets to the worst, when it gets real bad. Yeah. That's when you got to tighten up your grip. Yeah. And then you got to lean on God even for the more. Yeah. I don't I don't care if you've been playing with him, Lord yeah. have mercy. Yeah. When it gets to the worst, that's when God is calling you to lean on him even the more because he's the only one that can fix your problem. Yeah. But I guarantee you that God will fix it. Will fix it I'm telling you, I'm, I'm gonna give a testimony by that. I said God will fix that thing. I've been at Great Love for 21 years, I've seen God fix it. Yeah. Oh, Lord have mercy. I've seen it when it got to the worst, but God fixed it. I, I said, God fix it. Y'all ain't saying that. I've seen it when it was down, but God fixed it. Can I get a witness right here? I've seen God fix it. I, I know that God says, ah, ah, Lord have mercy. I'm trying to get it through to you that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Somebody. Somebody look at me. You get ready to give up. Come on. Yes, sir. You don't have to go to suicide. You can go to Jesus. Come on. And Jesus will fix that thing. And when he fixes it, I'm coming by to tell you that it's fixed. And it's fixed for R E A L. He fixes it for real. Yes, we are. So we'll fix it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, yes. which has a great reward. All right. Yeah. I'm preaching it because I'm living it. Come on with it. Don't cast away your confidence no. because it has a great reward. Yes, sir. Because you have need for endurance. Yes, sir. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I said you got need for endurance. Yeah. Yeah. You got to go through some things. Yeah. So that after you have done the will of God, yeah. you may receive the promises that God has said in his word. Yeah. Yeah. But, but after you have done the will. And so, and so, 
in spite of the circumstances, yes, sir. I'm going somewhere. God is with you. Yeah. I, I mean, if he says, he says, Isaac, I, I never leave you nor forsake you. That's what he's right. I got to believe that by faith. Yeah. Yeah. I just can't pick that up and read it. I got to believe that by faith. If God says he'll never leave me nor forsake me, I got to believe that by faith. Well, well, watch this now. Watch this. When it gets to the worst. Yeah, yeah. When it gets real bad. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's what God says. I know. I need you to charm me. Yes, Lord. I need you to get closer to me. Yeah, right. yeah. You're right. Because even Thank in you, the sir. worst. Thank you, sir. I'm still there with you. Because I said I'll never leave you. And I'll never forsake you. Thank you, sir. God help me here. I got a deacon here at this church. And his name is Ron Harry. And I remember when we took up some money. And great love, let me say thank you for that. Because yes, in the book of Acts, nobody went lacking. Y'all yes, right. yes, came through. Yes. I mean, y'all came through. And I thank God that y'all came through. Yes, yes. And even though we got the kidney for wrong, uh -huh. something went wrong. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Something just went wrong. Yeah. Ron was at the point where he said, I'd just rather die. Mercy. And I know you think you can't get to that point. Because he got a kidney and we better, oh God, everything's, everything's, everything. Now watch this here now. He got to the point where he said, I just, my best friend, I just, no, no, you, no, no, the Bible said, Ron, you ain't gonna die. I'm speaking life in your life, Bible. Yes. Brother, if you see, this is where God comes in at. When, the, when somebody get that low, and you ain't got time to talk all that savvy stuff. Do the scripture, baby. That's the only thing that's gonna win. You shall not die. You shall live, says the Lord of all. Y'all didn't say nothing in here. And when it got bad for Deacon Ron, it got bad, Ron, to say, I just don't. Then after a while, Ron went to the hospital. Thank you, Lord. Again, I just want you to see his situation. Mm -hmm. They say, we got to take your leg off. Uh, uh. I said, the devil is a liar. Yeah. I said, God, God, you didn't bring him this far just to leave. Yeah. That's right. and, and you don't do stuff halfway. That's you do right. it all the way. Ain't nobody right. talking. Right. But it takes your faith to believe. And I got a witness here. And so, and so Ron went back to the hospital. Oh, help me, Lord Jesus. And, and listen, listen. They didn't take a feet, but they took a toe. Y'all ain't saying nothing. They didn't take a leg, but they took a toe. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I said they thought they was going to have to take a leg, but they only took a toe. Can you understand what I'm saying? And when Ron got well, when he came back, y'all remember Deacon Ron came here and he ran around the church. Ron was happy. Ron was feeling real good because the devil thought he had him. But God said to Ron, son, I never leave you nor forsake you. Right now, yeah, you looking at me, yeah, and I want to tell you, son, that God is right there with you. Yes, he is. And you lay down in that bed. I want to tell you, if you lay in that bed, lift up your hand and tell the Lord, thank you. Come on, talk back to me. Lift up your hand, Ron, and tell the Lord, thank you, because God told me to tell you that He has not finished with you yet. He has complete the mission with you, boy. You gonna get out. I believe it by the power of God that your kidney is going to kick in. You ain't yeah. saying nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I believe that by the power of God yes, yes. that it's going to kick in. It's so good. Oh, God it's help me. And I wish I had a praying church that can believe God with me. Come on, y'all. Can y'all believe God with me? Come on, no religion. No religion. I said no religion. We're going to believe God together that the kidney is going to kick in. Because that's our brother in the law. And if God says he'll never leave you nor forsake you, I believe the word of God. Anybody here with me? I said, God says I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm preaching to somebody right now that you're going through 
trials and tribulations. But remember, Joseph went through hell, but he came out on the other side. God will, God will, God will bring you out out of all of your trials and your tribulations. Just stay with the Lord. Wherever you at right now, wherever you're watching me at right now, if you're in that bed of affliction, get up out of your bed and say thank you. Thank you, Lord. You'll never leave me, don't forsake me. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, Lord, thank you. Watch me here. And I'm getting ready to go for me. I want to tell that dog. I forgot your name, sir. But I appreciate you for laying hands on my sister. Thank you, Lord. Thank anointing her with oil. Thank you, Lord. And believing that God was going to keep her. Yes, I appreciate the God in you. Yes, Even as a doctor, yes. I appreciate the favor of God. Yes. That when she walked in the hospital, yes. the favor of God was on her life. And I appreciate you for what you have done. And I give God the glory for my sister that's alive and well. Billy, I thank God for your baby. I thank God that you are all right. God says he'll never leave you. No. For sin. Getting up, 
in the morning time, because you ain't at no job, and if you got to cut, get on your computer at 8 o'clock, get up at 7 o'clock and go walk around the corner. Walk to the mailbox. I can't get no help in there. Walk somewhere and get some exercise. Because if you sit in that house and eat all that junk food, it's going to mess you up. And then you ain't eating no spiritual food. And so watch me. You ain't eating no spiritual food. So here you are. You are just... <sighs> ain't been to no word here. Girl, you been out to the church? Yeah. Girl, the people ain't doing nothing down there. Because you ain't been in no word. And while you talking, you can't even hardly walk. Watch this again. And the next thing that'll happen to you is you're going to go to the doctor and the same man that you talk about, I ain't coming to see you because I ain't going to the hospital. But I'm going to have to pray for you on that phone. 512 825 8321. So I'm trying to help you. You got, you got to get out. You, 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 listen, you got to get out. Listen, when you really want something to happen for you, you would do it. I'm in the diabetic class. We got to get on Zoom. Come on. You sound right. We got to Zoom everything now. I'm getting you on this. I got to Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Some of y'all got the children at home and you going crazy. I can't. I, 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 stop all of that. Stop that. When I had my diabetes class over here at the church, my A1C was 6.7, Harold. Mm -hmm. But you know what I did? I said, the devil is alive. The devil is alive. I got up, so I was walking. Hey, hey, hey. I'm not a good shit. Had the kid at home. Same when they saved me the kid. The lady took me through the kid. Check it. Put it in there. Uh -huh. Put it in there. And I'm laughing and joking with it because that's what I do. Uh -huh. And some people think, you know, a laugh is good for you. Yes, it is. And it is. It's good for the soul. You sit around there and be all crazy. So if I was pitching that thing, I said, oh, girl, I got to do it again. She said, Pastor. I, I did it. And you know what it was? 5.3. All right. Come on. 5.3. You know how it went down? You know why it went down? Because I decided to be, I, I decided. I, I, I said, I decided. And when I decided, I went for a walk and it went down. Some of y'all need to decide to get in the Word of God. I know you're right. I know you're right. Get in the Word of God and let Yes, yes. Because those are the churches over there. I done went over. Brother Carter going to sleep for us this morning. All right, all right. It's open to come there. That's all right. Might meet somebody. Don't know him as your personal savior. We ask that you would come. Yeah, Lord. If you know you're not saved, <coughs> this is the most important decision you ever make in your whole life. To invite Jesus Christ to live in your heart. To be your personal savior. So as I pray this in a prayer here, repeat out to me. Heavenly Father. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. I believe in my heart that Jesus is your son. He died on the cross for my sins. He was buried. He was buried. He rose on the third day. On the third day. He now now, in heaven, in heaven, on your right side, on the right side, interceding, interceding, on my behalf, on my behalf, Jesus, Jesus, I'm inviting you, I'm inviting you to come live in my heart, to come live in my heart, to be my personal, to be my personal Lord and Savior, Lord and Savior, Jesus, Jesus, I need you, I need you, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, take complete, take complete control, control over my life, yes, my life. I've been watched, I've been watched in, the blood of Jesus. in the blood of Jesus. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. Thank you. Thank you. Heavenly Father. Yes, sir. For loving me. For loving me. Enough. Enough. To save my life. To save my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We pray. We pray. Amen. 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 I don't know. Thank you. Turn.
future For I know what my dreams are saying And today I won't be silent For he knows Right up the bottom of Brother Harold. Amen. 
trying to target the essential workers that work it, that's coming home, that's in this area, and uh, it, it's just not going to be fruits and vegetables. It's going to be real meat, eggs, it's going to be grocery. And so I think we're starting uh, at the end of this month, we're going to launch that ministry. And I thank God for what he's doing, even in the midst of the pandemic. Amen. We're still able to feed, we're still able to give, and uh, God has blessed us to do that. And next Sunday is our men's day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's our men's day and, uh, I'm asking each man to at least give $50. Because some of y'all don't know how to sow seeds, and y'all don't know the seeds do grow. Yes, they and, do. And uh, I uh, try to teach you all I yeah. can. You just got to get on board. Uh, reaction to men. Now Joseph, I don't know if men are going to come to rehearsal, but I do know that uh, any, meeny, miny, and mo can get up there and sing. That's me, you, and Nate. All right. I don't hear nobody. Because y'all think I can't sing. Y'all yeah. really do. Yeah, but I remember singing, Joseph. Yeah, amen. I remember singing all the day and Dita got on board. Amen. Yeah, she, she, she got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, 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 I'm not going to beg nobody to do it. We ain't going to beg nobody to do it, man. Be you and Dave, man. We'll put on a concert right here. That's what my mom. We'll put on a concert. But Minister Davis going to be our speaker for next Sunday morning. Amen. We'll be our speaker for the brotherhood. We are having the virtual brotherhood uh, annual. And then the first Sunday of this month, we're going to try to do the, uh, the virtual drive-by communion right. where you come and you park in the parking lot. Uh, you can hear a sermon. We're going to be trying to get get with Daryl. Okay. And we're trying to get them speakers lined up outside. Mm -hmm. You hear a sermon, and then we're going to do communion and I'll need every deacon that I have. If you can't make it, I understand to be on board and then we'll serve communion in that style and that way everybody can get out of the house for a minute. Yeah. Amen. You don't have to say, well, pass up and luck and I can get out, get in your car. When I say stay in the car, stay in the car. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get out. Stay in the car. I know you ain't seen your buddy in a while and it's hard. It's hard when you, I, I saw Evangelist Graham. Y'all say amen for Evangelist Graham, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, when I saw her, I couldn't help. You know, when you ain't seen people in a while, it's kind of like that. You just go for the hug. It's like, it's hard to, to do the hey, 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 hey. But we got to do that. But great love, I thank y'all. I thank y'all so much for your service. And I thank you for grinding in and helping me to keep on keeping on. Because this is not easy. But watch this. I give glory to God, but I thank you all for helping me. Amen. Yeah, for helping me. Because if I could do all this by myself, I would, but I cannot. And so I thank all of you. And again, y'all, I'm going to say it one more time. And y'all probably said, why he's singing on that? Let's say amen again for how I will. Because I want to sing. Favor ain't fair. 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 Favor ain't fair.
before what God has sent me here to serve God. I thank you. Y'all come on, let's stand and be dismissed. Uh, yes, ma'am. I mean, yes, sir. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, you don't want to miss. Uh, next Sunday, we've got a uh, renowned uh, saxophonist. It's going to be our guest musician, Jacob Brown. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to come and play along. All right, if you love music, come on. And Bible study, my Bible study is making day. It's going to be tomorrow from 6.30 to 7.30. And we've been in worship. We've been trying to teach people about worship because y'all think worship is just coming in there and singing a song. But it's way more to worship than that. Worship is a lifestyle that people don't want to leave. And you think you're worshiping, but you're not. Y'all come on the stand. God. We magnify your name for how you're teaching us what to say in this hour and how to say it. I pray for this world. I pray against this pandemic, God, but you got it under control. I thank you for everything that you're doing here in this ministry and across this world because the word got to get out. In Jesus' name we pray and the church did say... But we got to do that. But great love, I thank y'all. I thank y'all so much for your service. And I thank you for grinding in and helping me to keep on keeping on. Because this is not easy. But what's this? I give glory to God, but I thank you all for helping me. Amen. Yeah, for helping me. Because if I could do all this by myself, I would, but I cannot. And so I thank all of you. And again, y'all, I'm going to say it one more time. And y'all probably said, why he's singing on that? Let's say amen again for how I will. Because I want this thing to happen. I really want this thing to happen. Come on, y'all, because he said if it happens, it's going to be a real right at the bridge of our family church. We'll be at the buck, man. Yeah. Y'all ain't saying, God, fame ain't fair. Favor ain't fair. Favor ain't fair. And I'm grateful for what God has sent me here to serve God. I thank you. Y'all come on, let's stand and be dismissed. Uh, yes, ma'am. I mean, yes, sir. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, you don't want to miss. Uh, next Sunday, we've got a uh, renowned uh, saxophonist. It's going to be our guest musician, Jacob Brown. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to come and play along. Get up and do All right. If you love music, come on. <laughs> And Bible study, my Bible study is making day. It's going to be tomorrow from 6.30 to 7.30. Amen. And we've been in worship. We've been trying to teach people about worship because y'all think worship is just coming in there and ah, yeah. singing a song. Yeah. But it's way more to worship than that. Yeah. Worship is a lifestyle that people don't want to leave. Yeah. And you think you're worshiping, but you're not. Y'all come on the stand. Come on, this is the Bible study.
three. You know, somebody's looking for a nice used car, uh, you can call me at 512 825 8321. My son Isaac got some nice used cars. And uh, for church folks, I'd like to talk now a little bit for you. Amen. <laughs> Father, we come now, we come in the name of Jesus, and we thank you. Thank you for what you've done in this service. We give you glory for how you're keeping us, God. We magnify your name for how you're teaching us what to say in this hour and how to say it. I pray for this world. I pray against this pandemic, God, but you got it under control. I thank you for everything that you're doing here in this ministry and across this world because the word got to get out. In Jesus' name we pray and the church did say, 